Hey, you guys. How you guys doing, girl? It's time for another chit chat. It has been a busy February. Are we in February? Child, we're about to be in March. <laughs> like in a, a, a fortnight. Sorry, y'all. I've been watching way too much <laughs> House of the Dragon. We're going to get into it, girl. So, it is a lot going on. Y'all know how we do this with this chit chat video. I talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and what I'm watching on TV. So, y'all, while we're doing this actual chit chat i have a new product line that i'm going to be reviewing for y'all this is coming up like in a few more days so be patient this is the do i've been eyeing this product for years and at first i was like it's a little pricey but i got extra coin and so i went ahead and purchased a leave-in and a styling product and right now i'm going to do a just a basic twist out girl so y'all know how we do this let's go into my personal life um my husband was here for two weeks and girl he left he left and i was a little i was in my feelings and you know it's good to have a mama that gives it to you raw and honest my mama's like you know he's doing what he's supposed to do as a man he's providing so let him provide so i'm like you're right mama you're right you're right so he was here for two weeks we enjoyed him and he went back um about three days ago um, and he's going to come back though. He's going to come back for spring break and that's like in three more weeks. And then we're going to go up there when he comes back for the summertime. So yeah, we enjoyed him while he was here. Um, so you guys in February, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm staying track on my, um, goals for the, for the actual quarter and I, I feel very, very good about it. I really do. So, you know, I've had another video on how I actually go about, you know, setting my goals and, and achieving my goals. And I felt a certain type of way ever since COVID that I wasn't, a, a, I wasn't, I felt like for me, I wasn't accomplished a lot this year already. I just gotta, you know, just be consistent, right? Just be consistent. Girl, look at that length. Yeah, look at that length. Um, so what else is going on, child? Right now, my niece is here and her baby is here. I, girl, <laughs> I am so tired, y'all. Y'all have to remember, keep in mind, I mean, I haven't had been around a baby like this consistently in days, in like 10 years. And she's active because she just started walking. Um, I'm going to put a video down here so y'all can see her. She is so petite. Like she is so, she's short and she's little. Like I keep telling my niece, I'm like, JB was this size at six months. She's like, really? I said, yeah, but my baby was a ham. He was, he was you know, knocking babies out of the cribs. <laughs> JB was big as, and he still is. He's always in the 90 percentile for, uh, since he was like two weeks old, child. He was like knocking kids over. But she's so sweet and she's so cute, but I'm tired. When I tell you I'm so tired, and I, it's not even I'm, it's not like I'm doing anything. It's not like I'm putting her to bed. You know, I'm holding her, I'm walking her to sleep, rocking her to sleep. I mean, for naps, running around with her. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying them, and you know, I have my niece here. My niece is young; she's only 25, um, and so I wanted her here because I feel like as someone that's older than her and as her aunt that. The best way to, especially this generation, y'all, I don't know what you call, are they Gen Z? What are they? Well, this generation, you have to lead by example. I could tell you over and over and over and over what you should do. But if I show you as a mom, as a wife, how I lead my household, you understand what I'm saying? Maybe that can soak in a little bit more. So we were talking, meaning my me and my niece and I were, were talking a couple of days ago, and I was flat out. I was like, hey, you, I can come pick you up. You want to you wanna come here for a week? She's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm serious. So I called my mom up. I said, put her on the phone. She's like, okay. I said, let me tell you something. When I say something, I mean it. I can come pick you up right now. Don't, don't you let me waste my purple lipstick. And she started laughing. I said, I'm serious. Don't let me. I'm not going to waste my purple lipstick and jumpsuit to come get you because I'll come get you. Now we're and they're here been for a few days they've been here for a few days they're gonna be here for a week and so what i mean by by leading by example we're getting ready to go out to eat to Papados a couple of days ago in richardson right and so i'm telling my niece i'm like okay i made a reservation i'm giving you two hours to get ready 
what you need to do as a mother, you need to get your child ready first and then you get ready. Because what you don't want to do is you get ready, you get her ready, the baby ready, and let's say if she had an accident, you know what I mean? You you accidentally lifting up and you mess up your makeup. It could be anything. It, it could be something minor, but it's just always best to get um, your child ready. And then you get, I even do this for JB. And I told, I, I showed her by example. I said, you see JB, he's already ready. The only thing he has to do is put on his clothes and he can get his own stuff ready. I have everything laid out. And then Sunday, I'm letting her know. I'm like, okay, Sunday is like my, what the kids call the reset day. But we've been doing this before it was called a reset. You know what I mean? I said, Sunday is my day to prepare. So I'm getting JB's uniforms together. I'm going through the roller decks in my head, what I'm going to be making for the week, what I'm going to be cooking. She's like, you cook all the time? I said, yeah, I told her. I said, I cook every two to three days. Enough food. So I cook on Sunday for enough food from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And I, I cook again on Wednesday for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then when my husband is here, we usually go out to eat on the weekend or we order in. So I probably cook three times a week, but I cook enough food to make it last for the next two to three days. You see what I'm saying? So that's what it is. So um, so one day she was up and I said, how much sleep you got? She's like, oh, I didn't sleep that. I didn't sleep that well. I think I got like only six hours. I said, welcome to motherhood. Welcome to motherhood. And it's not to say that, you know, all babies are like that. You know, right now, you got to make sure we put it on the schedule, be consistent with it. And then, but things are always, always going to happen. You're going to go through the teething. You're going to go through where they want to wake up. You're going to go through, oh my God, they're ready to go to school. And then that's going to be different. So I told her, I said, I didn't start sleeping eight hours a night till JB was in school. Because it's always something. If they if they're sick, something happens. Um, they they have a nightmare, something happens. So I get up. I right now since he's away in Kansas, I do all the pick up and drop off. I help him with his homework. I get his lunch together. He helps clean up around the house. He's been doing stuff around the house. I said I go to bed and I wake back up. So she's like, because a couple of days ago, she's like, what do you do for fun? I'm like. I said, well, I said, well, I like to read. Um, we go out to eat every now and then. But I said, but I'm not even thinking about what I'm doing for fun right now. I'm thinking about what I have to do for the next day. You know what I mean? I mean, of course, I have my hobbies. Y'all know that I have my hobbies. I told her I love to plan. That's a hobby I love to read, which I still am reading. But this is, I think a lot of people look at social media and look at blog, people vlogging. And they think it's like, oh, what did they call it? The soft life. Girl, those first few years is not all that grand. Like the first, I would say until the child is actually in school, it is tiring. It is work. It's like when you have more kids, it's even more work. So yeah, she's she's starting to see. She's like, wow. She's like, you. She's like, why don't you sit down? I said, I'm used to this. I got to get it done. I ain't got time to be worrying about stuff. I got to get it done. Um, she was surprised that I was on anxiety medication. She said, I could see that, but you on medication? I said, yeah, I've been on, I've been on anxiety medication for 20 years, but I ain't got time to think about it. I, I gotta, <laughs> I'm trying to think about, about the catfish I'm going to get. <laughs> but no, anyway, I'm enjoying her. In a couple more days, we're going to go for Friday. I mean, we're going to do happy hour. Um, but yeah, y'all. That's the biggest way you can teach people, in my opinion. It's just leading by example. You can tell them... You can keep preaching, you know, but until you actually lead by example, walk the talk, is that what they call it? Walk the walk. That's when people can really learn. So I've been eating, but that's what I'm saying. I've been eating better, y'all. I've been eating so much better today for lunch, um, for dinner. I mean, I made us the green goddess salad and she was surprised by that. She's like, I'm so proud of you. I didn't know you ate this. You ate like this. I said, yeah, I've been eating like this, meaning eating fairly healthy compared to my family child i've been eating like this for 20 years i have to i can't eat fast food and junk all the time and no we're not like that so. child yesterday i was on facebook and i saw someone i was watching who i've been following she's like <laughs> i uncleaned my whole house looking at this viral tiktok about the pathological cheating husband i'm like pathological liar cheating husband i'm like who 
was and then i heard i saw someone else looking just at this particular thread on facebook right and another person wrote i'm on part 20. i'm like part 20. i'm a part 15. so i'm like so someone shared they linked to the actual TikTok one of the videos and i went to TikTok, and i'm looking at you know people commenting Checking in from Australia. I'm on part six. Checking in from Belgium. I'm on part 34. I'm like, how many part? What is this? I'm, I'm invested now. I'm like, what is this about? 50 part series playlist about a woman detailing her tribulation. We're going to call it tribulation. With her marriage to a pathological liar and all the things she had to endure. I was like, okay, I'm going to lay off True Crime for a while on YouTube and let me dive into this, baby. Let me tell you something. It's spoiler. It's going to be spoiler. So if you don't want to hear anything about this or if you're tired of hearing this, I'll list down below where you need to go to to not hear anything about this. When I told you, y'all, I was so invested. At first, I was like, Okay, so maybe she found out he, he was married already, or maybe she found out that, you know, he, I don't know. I was, I was thinking the basic. Within the first 20 minutes of this actual shitstorm, I was like, you have got to be kidding me. I'm going to list like the top five jaw-dropping incidents of the entire fiasco in my opinion this is just my opinion now i didn't watch it all on tiktok instead there are several people on youtube that have been posting so cliff notes summary there's this young woman who met a guy via social media and within a span of a few months, I can't even remember exactly how long it was, but <laughs> it was less than five months. They dated, got engaged, and got married. Red flag. And she says it herself that she missed all the red flags. And so one thing I absolutely admire about this girl is that woman is that she totally owns up to to being a fool. And that's not me saying that this is what she said. She said, I, I own up to it. I was, that's the first thing she says actually is that she was a fool. There's this desire, this overwhelming desire for women to get married and have kids by a certain age. There's this almost like, you know, it's your, your biological clock is ticking. You gotta go ahead and find a man. And even if, you know, even if you don't wanna have kids, you know what I mean? Just. You don't want to be lonely. You don't want to die alone. So she even said to herself, there was this desire for her. Why me? Why not now? And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to wait on God anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Even though the signs are there, the red flags are there to pause, break, don't do it. So she meets this guy via social media and literally on the way to their first date, she gets a she gets a flat tire. He actually steps in, is like takes care of the situation, he gets her car fixed. And she's basically like, Oh my God, he is such a gentleman. And I'm like, mm. what's interesting is that she's not she's very well spoken. She's she carries herself um you know you can tell she's intelligent you know what you know what i mean she's not someone that's coming off as this book of wolf but she's on her game you know so she has a job a good paying job i think she works for like um the police department within in, in atlanta so i'm gonna get to it y'all there were certain things that i was like this that's a red flag right there how do you let me just say this and i'm gonna bring up some of my stuff that happened in my relationship that made me know that okay we're good so this was really a cautionary tale for other women and it's sad to see so many women because i was looking at certain comments from other women saying i dated a narcissistic like this it was really hard to get out of the out of the relationship yada 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 so there are so many things that she should have done before they actually walked on the aisle number one she said that she did a background check after she got the marriage license but she did say in the video i know i know i probably should have done it before 
Now there's different levels of a background check. And I will say this again, spoiler, the social that he gave her was a fake social the first time. She got a second set. <laughs> The first social was different because that was actually for their marriage license. The second social was what she used. I believe she had to have a background check and her job needed her spouse's social. And she noticed that that was totally different. Um, before I even got really serious with my husband, and I really do think you should have to do this with anyone, especially nowadays, but I did this 20 years ago. My manager at the time actually suggested it. She said, you know what? I have this software. Give me your, your uh, boyfriend's information and I can run a, now what she had was like an in-depth background check because she worked for the University of North Texas. The background check, check she was able to do, it will pull up their actual, everything about them, their driver's license, people who were affiliated with them. So his brothers came up and I knew them. So when she ran my husband, I saw her drive. She's, and she was like, is this him? I said, yes, ma'am. Well, I'm like, yes. And so his driver's license came up, everything, everything came up clean. She wasn't able to get this information. When I tell you, y'all, I, I, I am a person that, I have little to no patience for BS. There were so many times where I wanted to turn this stuff off, y'all. When it got to like part six or seven, I was like, screw this. Part 20, I was like, I'm done. Part 32, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? This is too much shit for me. I got a list. Top five things. Again, five things that was just eye-opening for me that just didn't make any sense. I felt like he spent... Well, I'm just going to say this. They both spent a ridiculous amount of time looking for a house. The, the entire house car ordeal literally wanted to make me turn it off. I mean, she spent a good hour talking about that. And I was like, I was so over that. Number two, one thing that really had me, he was killing off people with COVID. So just to let you know, she met this guy during COVID. And so things were, of course, as we know, was a little bit different back then. Not a little, a lot different. First of all, I didn't I didn't even know people were dating back then. He was say that, or he did say that his grandmother died during COVID. And then who else? Another, like two family members died of COVID. And I'm like, I think like his... Like his his ex-wife's daughter died of COVID. He literally lied about the number of siblings he had. Basically said that his father had two kids before his mother and father had kids. That was a lie. The other brother was actually a twin and the twin ironically was a vice president who drove a BMW. So he almost like stole his twin brother's lifestyle. The one thing that really just had me like, I was actually chuckling at this. He would have conversations or talk to people that weren't there. Meaning he would call his brother, let's say his brother is John. He would call John every morning at six o'clock in the morning and be like, hey, John, how you doing? Yeah. Well, you, hey, um, oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Hey, Vivian, John said hi. And I'm like, hey, John, how you doing? So she said that he would do that for months, every day, talking to his brother, but he wasn't talking to anyone. Come to find out, he wasn't talking to anyone. He was basically talking to himself. But he, the biggest one, y'all, when I heard this, I literally stopped what I was doing when, when I was listening to it. I stopped what I was doing. Sorry, y'all, the baby's rocking himself to sleep. I stopped what I was doing. I turned off the phone. I took my headphones off because I was, I was cooking. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. So at one point, he had a knee injury. Now, he tried to tell her that he hurt his knee at work because, again, he's a VP. And by the way, he's a VP and during COVID, he still had to go into the office. Anybody can tell you when you work in corporate America, the VPs, those that are upper management, basically, even before COVID, they wouldn't have to go into the office like that. So definitely with COVID, they didn't have to go into the office. I'm going to tell you this right now. Those of you who didn't watch it, he turned out to be a 
fork what he turned out to be a forklift driver when she said there's nothing wrong with being a fork is it called a forklift i've been drinking he would work in construction basically but he told everyone he was a vp and so apparently he had hurt his knee at the job but then he comes to tell her no i think this this is an old injury from when i used to play um football because again he used to play football right so she's like oh my gosh okay so at this point the injury was so bad that he was bedridden. He couldn't work. Um, he lost a lot of weight. She said he went from like a 3X to a 1X. So she would, you know, he would have Gatorade there. And when it was getting closer to the time when she was kicking him out, she went into the bedroom. He actually moved into another bedroom. It wasn't the uh, master. It was like a second guest bedroom. So... She went into this particular bedroom to, you know, see what was going on in there because, again, he had been drinking Gatorade. She looked at the bottles of Gatorade and she's like, the empty bottles of Gatorade, he had peed in them and left all of the bottles there. When I tell you that shit, he said, oh, I couldn't make it to the bathroom. But you can make it down to Atlanta for a prostitute to do. That's 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 not something else. That's something else. So y'all, this story, it is getting out of hand because now Jerome is his name. Jerome. Jerome has came out and basically said that Risa is lying. That that after they went through therapy, he they went through therapy. Excuse me, because he caught her cheating with Bradley. <laughs> And he doesn't care. And the thing that got me that I will say about, you know, Risa is that I don't understand why she, f I don't understand and I don't have to understand, but cause it's not my, my story, but she spent a lot of time trying to find the truth, trying to find some truth when she spoke to his brother, his aunt and his sister and, sorry, he spoke, these are the people that basically gave her some truth. If the family and the ex-wife are telling you it's a lie, everything's, everything's a lie. Your entire life, that entire life was a lie. And that is so disturbing. You know, this is, and I said this in my Tinder sw Swindler video, is that this is what happens when the idea of being in love outweighs anything else you get so infatuated with being in love and wanting to be loved and being married that you could lose damn common sense and she even admits to that and so i think even her even when she got um, married her mama was i think her mom was even almost relieved which is a little bit that's so sad to me so. see me y'all let me know what your thoughts are because i was like you have got to be kidding me enough of that what I'm watching on TV, I'm really not watching not much of anything, to be quite honest, but I did finish True Detective Season 4. Now, it's the one with, what is her name? What is her name? Jodie Foster. True Detective is basically what it says. It's like a detective series, but it has like a supernatural feel. All from Season 1. I really didn't, I watched Season 2. Did I watch Season 2? I watched season two. I didn't really watch season three. Season four was very interesting. I think a lot of people from the comments I've been seeing and reviews and recaps, a lot of people were not feeling season four. They didn't like the ending. They felt like there was a lot of plot holes. They had a couple, there was a lot of things left unanswered. I'm a type of person to where, especially if it's a series that has the unknowing the feeling of unknowing the supernatural feel i'm okay with not having the answers to everything i'm fine with that it was very sad it was very sad towards the end but i enjoyed it to the point to where i think i'm gonna watch it again now it's not as good as season one it's really not but i still enjoyed it girl house of the dragon let me tell you something y'all my grace I don't think I know a couple of y'all said this was better than um Game of Thorns. Mm, I don't know about that, but it's pretty good. It's up there. So, but I was a little confused after like I think like after episode four, 
they started like escalating the years. Like you watching one episode, like episode three, um, she's pregnant. Then episode four, the baby is like a teenager. They aging like those kids are young and the rest of us, y'all know. <laughs> When it comes to soap operas, those kids be aging like this. They age one minute, you know, um, they babies, and the next they got their own babies. They be aging fast as hell. You know, Victor Newman up there. <laughs> I was not, and I'm going to give you some spoilers. I wasn't sure how. I was like, there was a certain things that was going on, and I was like, this is another flowers in the attic bullshit. Be yes, some ancestral stuff. But you know, y'all, in all honesty, this is not saying I, I'm okay with it, but they are staying true to history. Um, marrying within the family was very common and still in certain um, countries is very common for cousins and stuff to me. I mean, the queen in Britain married her cousin. Saddam Hussein married his cousin. So it's very common. So in um, House of the Dragon, the niece ends up marrying her uncle, Damon. Now, Damon, y'all, I finished the, the series. Damon, now, Damon, y'all, I don't trust him at all. I really don't trust him. Like, there's something about him. And that one little, the other kid that had his eye taken off, out and he's still trying to get an iron from one of the <laughs> he's like you owe me i'm like if you don't sit your ass down um so i love that the house of valerian is that, am i saying it right that they are african-american that they're a black child they're not african-american they're black and child for a while especially when my grade was coming in i was like hell maybe i'm a valerian I got the bone structure. Maybe I should like go to Petco and say Dracoria and see if some shit pop off. Like seriously, like I was, y'all, when I saw that gray coming in, y'all, I'm serious. I'm silly. But when I saw like gray coming in and I saw them, those black people with the white hair, I was like, I'm going to let my hair go gray because I'm trying to look like that. They look stunning with the comparison of the white hair next to their chocolate skin. Absolutely beautiful. Um... I love it, y'all. I can't wait for season two. Um, there were a couple of scenes where I was like, I had to stop it and rewind. Not as much as Game of Thrones, but there were a couple of shockers for me while watching the series. And the dragons are huge. Now, I know that we got a glimpse of it. Not necessarily of it. But in Game of Thrones, they were talking about how the dragons were, were like the size of lands. But the dragons are absolutely massive in House of the Dragons. Do we know how many seasons it's going to be? I'm just curious if it's going to be as extensive as Game of Thrones. Or are we going to see people from Game of Thrones do a crossover? Even though I know it's like 160, 70 years before. But I'm excited. I really am to see what's in store. Um, that's it, y'all. I'm not watching nothing on Netflix. I want to watch Teenet again. Again, I'm really not looking into what's going on. Look, apparently Monique. I told y'all. I told y'all, Monique. Monique. Monique has apologized to Tyler Perry and Oprah. You see what I'm saying? You see, y'all. These celebrities get on my nerves. They really do. Like seriously. And apparently Nicki Minaj is inviting Cat Williams on tour for, for what? What is he going to do? Like, how is that going to work? You a rapper. He's a comedian. How is that? She needs to be worried about her damn pedophile ass uh, husband and brother. Y'all petty. But y'all, besides that, um, let me know what y'all watching. You know, I'm done with House of the Dragon. I'm done with True Detective. I want to watch another series, miss, but it is what it is. All right, y'all. I'm chatting away, and everybody's sleep. It's early. It's, it's not even 8 o'clock, and everybody's sleep. But all right, y'all. Y'all take care. Bye.